Well, I've been to McDonald's and I know that they're not going to want me filming in there, but look, I want to show you this. <laughs> this is the new McDonald's Happy Meal. And all these little drawings all around the outside are mine. Now, inside, so if we open this carefully, we have got a little mud puddle farm book, Mossop's Last Chance. And inside are all my drawings. And here is a little finger puppet of Mossop, who was in the first book. And I'm going to tell you all about how these books came about. But let's not talk about it. Let's do it. Well, here it is. This is the, if you're living in uh, Britain, uh, certainly England at the moment, it is January 2012, and you go into a McDonald's, you will get a Happy Meal like this. And all these illustrations on here of Mud Puddle Farm, I drew back in 1989 and some around about that. And if you actually look underneath here, I don't know if this focuses or not, but it says, uh, blah, blah, blah. Illust Mud Puddle Farm illustrations, copyright, Shoe Rainer, 1989. How amazing! Look, that's um, uh, <laughs> I'm on a happy meal. <laughs> um, this is the original book. This is the very first one, and this is a series called Jets, and uh, and it was it was really quite a, a groundbreaking book at the time. Uh, Apple Macs were just coming in, and there were things that you could do on an Apple Mac, like you could make the text go around and up until then children's books had always just been text and picture, text and picture and these were really the first books that really kind of you know opened it up and it was computers that gave the idea but it was actually no computers involved at all because uh, I know my publishers they didn't own a Mac, an Apple Mac or a they didn't, well they owned a funny old computer called an Osborne <laughs> you can look it up on Google so uh, I went along one day uh, show my work and uh, a lady called Fiona Kenchal who became a big influence on me as an illustrator um, came saw my work and said I want you to read this story called Mossop's Last Chance and can you illustrate she said it's quite a sad story and she said could you make it funny I'm just going to zoom in a bit so um, so I went off and did some kind of character sketches and how I thought it would look and at the time I thought it was going to be called Bandit Books uh, so and this is Mossop on his track to see Frederick waking them all up every morning and here's Mossop uh, waking up, he didn't want to get up and I got, oh, some more somewhere, anyway um, and, and these were kind of the, the, the roughs, oh there's some more here, there we are these are the, these are the kind of the drawings that I submitted uh, which I think probably got shown to Michael Moore Pogo uh, and he said yeah great, let's, let's do that, so I got the job um, here we are, there we are like that and um, that is the job. <laughs> These are all 64 pages. I've kind of planned them and ticked them off and you can see at the end, da -da! I was very pleased to get to the end. I found 64 pages a very big thing to do in those days. The first couple of drafts I did were rubbish. And uh, Fiona, Fiona uh, here, if you're an illustrator, this is a really interesting thing. Fiona said to me, imagine that you are a camera, okay, looking through a thing. She said, don't just stand in front of the scene, pretend you're on one of those boom things and you can look at the scene from round behind and from up above and from below. And that, and that idea just liberated me. Um, and I actually went too far and I, she had to rein me in a bit. But I had all this stuff in those days, look, grids. <laughs> That's where all the letters will go for. <laughs> and these are all little pencil sketches. Uh, this is the cover grids. And uh, I don't know if you can see, there's some very faint pencil sketches on there for things, ideas. Here, now they change from being squibs to conkers. Uh, this is a little page I did um, with little, just thumbnail sketches of, uh, you know, all the characters, just to kind of get the characters in my head, I think. And these are little sketches I did. That's of a real cat <laughs> that I did to kind of get this idea of a cat. Sleeping. So this is again a pencil sketch for the front cover here, um, and these are more sketches of Mossop. Still called Conkers, you can see, and this is the final uh, artwork that I sent for. This is the final rough that I sent for the uh, cover of Mossop's Last Chance. These are some more little things. 
Um, and then this, th these are the finished roughs for Mossop's Last Chance. And these are things that I sent in. Uh, and I had to plan the whole book, plan the layout. And um, I remember it being really, really difficult because it was breaking new ground. And we didn't have the idea of having done things on computer. You know, nowadays you do things because, you see, look here, the text is upside down, which was just kind of unheard of there because upside down, the ducks, they're upside down. And, and because you could just do that on a computer so easily and you could, we were seeing it in advertisements and things because computers cost an awful lot then. Um, so we thought, well, we can do it in a book. But in fact, this is all just pasted on upside down. Um, and this is how I did my roughs. And, um, and then I didn't know how to do <laughs> the finished things. <laughs> and this was, uh, you know, as I said, this was breaking new ground and I really didn't know how to draw them, uh, to make them fit in around the text. So this here is uh, of the book And Pigs Might Fly because we did seven of these stories around uh, Mud Puddle Farm. And this is the final artwork, and here's a little pint size. And look, I've drawn him onto these printed layout sheets. And, and in those days, then the, the layout sheet would be printed in blue because the camera couldn't see blue, and it would only see the black. And so I drew everything <laughs> onto these sheets because I knew where the text was going to fit, and I knew I could get it to fit exactly. And then all the text, that would now be just, you just, you know, draw a curvy line and type your text across it on a computer. I then had to write by hand on this stuff here, which, do you know, I can't even remember what this stuff is called. Uh, <laughs> it's a kind of tracing paper, but it's plastic. Drafting film, that's it. And then I would write the text over the top. And, uh, and here again, you see now, this would all just be take two minutes just to do that on a computer and I had to do it all by hand because without spending thousands of pounds thousands and thousands on a computer uh, that's the only way to do it and this is done on an overlay and again all these drawings are done on the blue layout so uh, here you are not many people get to see this <laughs> I've been sitting up in my attic now unlooked at for quite some time. Actually a couple of these did get taken out, got sent to an exhibition at the Seven Stories um, in Newcastle Children's Book Museum they, they have up there. And, uh, and this introduces all these characters, the Jigger, the dog, and uh, I think it's Daisy the Sheep. Daisy the Sheep is a bit stupid. And, um, and all these characters that I'm going to introduce you to over the next few weeks and show you how to draw them. So um, I'm going to put a little link up here to, when it's up for the Mud Puddle Farm playlist. Click it and you'll be able to see all the videos that I'm going to do based around Mud Puddle Farm. I'm going to show you how to draw all the characters. But this is how Mud Puddle Farm started way back in 1989 apparently, yes. <gasps> that was the year I got married. It's all coming back to me. Well, thanks for watching. And if you want to see more Mud Puddle Farm stuff, make sure you're subscribed and click that button up at the top. In the meantime, if you're wondering what else to do, why not go and learn how to draw a space shuttle? Just click the picture and off you go. Thanks for watching. You take care now. Bye bye.